Greetings, beloved. Welcome back to the Wednesday Word. I'm Chelsea Barrett. Hearing the voice of God is your birthright. That's right. Hearing the voice of God is your birthright. If you are a child of God, if you are a sheep of Jesus Christ, it is your birthright to hear the voice of God. I am so excited to be sharing with you today just a small piece of a foundational message in my latest book, The Sound of God, My Sheep Hear My Voice. I want to really place this word in your heart today. The foundation of this book is that my sheep hear my voice. If you are a sheep of Jesus Christ, beloved, that means that you hear the voice of God. You have the ability to hear the voice of God. You are capable of hearing the voice of Jesus. Hearing the voice of God, it's not just for prophets. It's not just for pastors and teachers and evangelists and those who are called to a specific ministry office. It's not just for special people or people who are well known or people with a big name. No, beloved, hearing the voice of God is your birthright. If you are a child of God, you have the capability to hear the voice of God. And God wants you to hear his voice even more so than you want to. God longs for you to hear his voice. And I believe for many of you watching me that there's a stirring inside you as well to hear and know the voice of God for yourself. Our mission and vision here at Freedom's Calling is to help you hear the voice of God so that you can maximize His promises. That, just, that does not just mean to share a prophetic word when the Lord gives utterance. It's wonderful that we have prophetic words. We need the prophets. We need prophetic words. We need for all people to prophesy as the Bible says. Paul says that we should all desire spiritual gifts, but especially that we may prophesy. Everyone who is a born-again believer can prophesy. But the mission behind this organization, Freedom's Calling, is not just to prophesy, not just for me to prophesy or for me, Chelsea, to hear the voice of God. It's to help you also to hear the voice of God for yourself. That's why God commissioned me to start this ministry as well as to write my latest book, The Sound of God, My Sheep Hear My Voice. So today I want to dig in a little bit and hopefully really plant this word in you so that you know, beloved, that I'm no a special person. God's not a respecter of person. Yes, God has called some prophets and some to certain ministry offices to hear God at a higher level and also to receive certain messages which only their office has the authority to deliver certain messages. Yes, all of that's true. However, Every single person who is a born-again believer has the ability to hear from God, and that's what I hope to really implant into your mind, soul, and spirit today. So let's start off by going to the Word of God. And I want to read to you a little bit from the book of Acts. Let's start, let's look at chapter 17, and we're going to start at verse 24. So let's take a look now. Now let me do a little backdrop here as usual before we start reading in verse 24. This is going to be Paul the Apostle speaking. And Paul, you know, by now in, in verse um, chapter 17, he's already been commissioned, he's already been sent out, he's already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's walking in the full capacity of his office, so he's going out where the Lord sends him to go and uh, share the gospel, to minister the word of God so that people can be uh, born again and just have eternal life and share in the graces of Jesus Christ. So Paul goes to this place in particular here, and when he gets to this place, it says in the word that his spirit is grieved because the people in this place they're worshiping idols they're worshiping these false gods or in a certain area this god that has no name the unknown god how ridiculous is that but anyway so let's pick up here and we're going to start let's start in verse 24 this is paul the apostle speaking he says god that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is lord of heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, verse 26, and hath made one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, verse 27, that they should seek the Lord. If happily, 
they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from any one of us. Let me read that again. Um, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Did you get that, beloved? What Paul the Apostle is saying here is that there's one God. He is the creator of all of this. He doesn't dwell in a temple. He doesn't dwell in the lifting of hands. Yes, God is in the temple. Yes, God is in worship when we lift our hands. But what Paul is saying here is that's not where he lives. Where God lives is on the inside of us. It's in him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. It also says here, what Paul the Apostle is saying, is that if we may happily feel after him, that means like seek after him, and we'll find him, and that he is not far from every one of us. Beloved, God is right there with you right now. He wants you to seek after him. He wants you to feel after him. He wants you to desire him. And it says here in the scripture, for in him we live and move and have our being. Also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Beloved, if we are the offspring of God, that means he is our parent and we are his children. What parent does not talk to their child? What child does not hear their parent's voice? There have been some scientific studies done that prove that a child inside a mother's womb hears the mother's voice. The child in the womb is able to hear the voice of the mother. How much more, beloved, are we able to hear the voice of God now that we are out of the womb because we are the offspring of God? God's made us in such a way where we are grafted in him. He is grafted in us. The way you choose to go is up to you. But your initial makeup, the DNA that God has made you with, he's made you with the ability, the capability to hear his voice, especially if you are his offspring, especially if you are the sheep of God, then that voice magnifies in your life. I really want you to hear this today, that you are born with the ability to hear from God. If you go back and look in the Genesis records, it talks about how God talked and walked with Adam in the cool of the day. That means that Adam was hearing God's voice because God was speaking. That was God's original creation. That's how God made it. Certainly some things happened. There was the fall and the Satan came in and there's been a lot of perversion over the years and just a lot of darkness that has caused man's ears to be dulled. But the scripture tells us clearly all over, I can share many scriptures with you. The scripture tells us all over that we have the ability to hear the voice of God. My favorite scripture, one of them I should say, and the foundational scripture for my book is John 10, 27. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Beloved, if you're a sheep of God, God wants to speak to you today. He wants to speak to you every day. It's not just a once in a while thing. God wants to talk to you all the time. God wants you to hear his voice all the time. I'd like to share just a couple more things with you from the word of God. These are some notes that I make. Um, Every time I sit down with God, I'm making notes. Every time I sit down with my Bible, I'm making notes. So I want to share just a couple more scriptures with you from uh, the book of John. Let's start in John 14, 21. The word of God says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Imagine that. So Jesus is saying, if you love him and if you keep his commandments... He's going to love you, the Father's going to love you, and He's going to manifest Himself to you. When Jesus manifests Himself, when He shows Himself to you, you see and you hear His voice. 
That's what the scripture says. John 14, 23, part B says, If a man loveth me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we, meaning Jesus and the Father God, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will come unto him, and to abode means to stay. So we're going to stay. We, Jesus the Father, uh, G, or God the Father, Jesus. God, the you know the three are one, the Holy Trinity. But in, in this scripture, it's specifically talking about God the Father and God is Jesus. We we will come and make our abode. We will come and live with you. If someone lives with you, if someone is one with you, it's really hard to live with someone twenty four seven and never say a word to them. If Jesus is living with you, beloved, if God is living with you, the Holy Spirit, the whole Trinity, they are one. You can't separate them. If they are with you, they're going to speak to you. If you live with someone, they're going to talk to you. If you're aware, if you acknowledge them. Let's look at another scripture here in John 15, 1 through 5. It says, Abide in me, abide in me, and me in you to bring forth much fruit, only possible with Jesus. John 15, 15. Let's, um, let's skip down there now. I want you to hear this today. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his master doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And hear this, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever, hear this, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Beloved, there's so many scriptures that I can share with you today. But these that I've shared, hopefully they've been tickling you. They've been pricking you or convicting you in your heart to know that, yes, I'm a sheep of Jesus Christ. And yes, God says that I can hear his voice. Hopefully something's been happening on the inside of you to let you know that. There's one other scripture I want to share with you today. And this is from 1 John 2.20. Actually, I'm going to share a couple. Um, 1 John 2.20 is the first. And this is, all of this stuff is in my book. But I want to read this to you. And this is a personalized scripture here. It says, the Holy Spirit is in me. And because the Holy Spirit is in me, I know all things. That's a scripture bullet I created for you as a source of meditation. That's based on 1 John 2.20. The word of God, beloved, says the Holy Spirit is in you. He is a spirit of truth, and he comes to reveal all truth to you. And because the Holy Spirit is in you, you know all things. How can you possibly know all things unless the Holy Spirit himself is talking to you? John 16, 13 says, the Holy Spirit guides me into all truth. I know and comprehend truth. If the Holy Spirit is in you, he's your guide. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to us as a guide. The Father God gave us Jesus. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our guide. So how can someone guide you unless they're talking to you? How can someone tell you truth unless they're talking to you? Let's look at John 10, uh, 4 through 5. The way I personified it um, and personalized it for you says, Jesus goes ahead of me and I follow him because I know his voice. I will not follow a stranger. How can you know someone's voice unless you've heard them before, unless they're talking to you, unless you have a relationship with them? Beloved, it is your birthright as a child of God to hear the voice of God. It's just the way it is. A lot of things have happened over the course of time I mentioned that have caused people's ears to become dull. Things, there may be things in your own life that may cause yourself to become dull. We can't blame everything on Adam. A lot of people like to blame everything on Adam. And certainly, I'm sure he's taken responsibility for his part, him and Eve, and what's transpired over these years. But we also have to look within ourselves and take responsibility. There may be things in, in your life or in um, anyone watching. There may be things in your life. There have been things in my life that's blocked me from hearing the voice of God or that's deceived me. It could be your spirit man can deceive you. Other people can deceive you. The devil can deceive you. There are things in our lives that can deceive us from properly hearing the voice of God that can corrupt the word of God in our lives. I talk about some of these things in, in my latest book, 
But the bottom line that I really want to stress here to you today is that you are wired to hear the voice of God. You came out of the womb that way. You are wired. And in the last um, couple of scriptures I read, Jesus says that when you are with him, when he becomes one with you, that you will go to the Father and ask in his name to receive. Even though Jesus has already given us these things, we have the ability to hear the voice of God. Some of the promises of God, yes, they're automatic. Uh, but they still have to be appropriated. So one thing that you can do is go to God and just in your prayer time, as I go back and look at some of the prayers and some of the uh, journal entries that I've made to the Lord, I realize that I've been asking God to hear his voice more and more for a long time. There's not one month of journaling that I can go back and look at where I'm not constantly asking God, Lord, let me hear your voice. Or Lord, it's a part of my prayer. I want to hear your voice more. I want to hear your voice on a deep deeper level. So we have to ask God in prayer. We go to him and ask him. And it could be a constant asking. Just let it be a part of your prayer. It could be a part of your daily prayer. Father, let me hear your voice clearly today. There's also um, asking, yes, but you also have to have faith. It takes faith to hear the voice of God. Some people are born naturally hearing it. For some people, they're more attuned to hearing the voice of God. Some people, you actually have to become activated so that you are aware. In my book, I go through some exercises with you to get you activated in becoming aware. So you become aware, you know, you ask for it, and then you start practicing the presence of God. You start practicing listening to the voice of God. And I guide you through all of these things step by step, and I really break down things precept upon precept in the book. But I want you to know today, beloved, again, I know I keep repeating myself, and when I do this, it's because I really want you to hear and understand. It's because I really want you to hear and respond. Knowledge is good, but that's only a part of it. You have to appropriate the knowledge. As they say, knowing is only half the battle. The Word of God says, don't just be a hearer of the Word. I believe it's James 22 to 23. Don't just be a hearer of the Word, but be a doer also. Beloved, hear the word today and know that it is your birthright to hear the voice of God. Jesus says it very clearly in John 10, 23. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So if you don't hear anything else that Chelsea Barrett says today, hear the word of God to you. Hear what Jesus is saying to you today. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I've heard the audible voice of God at least two times in my life that I can remember. And on one of those times, the very, um, it may have been the second thing that I heard audibly from God, but it was Jesus speaking to me very loudly. I was just going about my day-to-day -day activity and Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And it, it startled me. I came to attention like quick, like, whoa. That was when the Lord started calling me into a deeper level of hearing his voice, into a new assignment. And I started to understand the call on my life and some things that the Lord had for me to do in that season. Beloved, today, Jesus is saying to you that if you are a sheep of his, you hear his voice. It's your birthright, beloved. So I am going to pray with you and... Um, and we'll take it from there. So just, um, just go ahead and close your eyes with me. I really want you to participate in this activation today. If you are not a sheep of Jesus Christ, we're going to give you the opportunity to become a sheep right now. We're going to get you activated to become a sheep, okay? So just go ahead and close your eyes with me right now and repeat after me. Father God in heaven, I am a sinner. I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for me and rose again on the third day. Jesus, come into my heart right now. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Baptize me now with your Holy Spirit. I believe right now that I receive it. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Now hold on for me just one more second. Now I want to say a prayer. I'll have you repeat after me and then I'll pray over you. I want you to ask Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit, ask Father God to hear his voice. Close your eyes with me right now and just repeat after me. Jesus, I believe your word. Now that I am your sheep, I want to hear your voice. I declare today that I hear your voice because I am your sheep. I declare today it is my birthright to hear the voice of God. I declare that I hear the voice of God. I am the sheep of Jesus Christ. He knows me and I follow him. I believe it and receive it now in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that even right now, even with what sounds like simple prayer, you have already begun to activate people in hearing your voice. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you that we've acquired, yes, I say we, we are the kingdom of God. We've acquired new sheep into the sheep pen. Lord, I thank you for the ears that are popping open right now. Father, I thank you. I see it as clear as day. I thank you that ears are popping open right now to begin hearing the voice of God, to begin hearing the voice of Jesus, to begin hearing and sensing the nudges of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask you for increase. I ask you for multiplication and the lives of those under the sound of my voice. Father, I ask you to take them to a higher level of hearing your voice. Lord, I ask you to take them into daily and deep communion and fellowship with you and hearing your voice and sensing your presence and in rejoicing in your love, Father. I thank you, Father, for you have done it and I see that you've done it. Lord, I thank you. I rejoice, Father, that ears have been opened, spiritual ears have been opened, spiritual eyes have been opened to see you, Father, to see what you want them to see, to hear, Lord God, to hear what you want them to hear, to sense you, Holy Spirit, to sense what you want them to sense, to be one with you, to be one with you, to live with you, to have their life with you, to move with you, to have their being with you. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. And I say in the name of Jesus, it is done. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I see as clear as day that ears have been opened to hear the voice of God, to hear the voice of Jesus, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You've asked, believe, and just keep your faith knowing that you're activated. God is going to speak to you. And I just want to mention um, my book one more time because this is a tool that God has given me for you, beloved. I wrote this for you. The sound of God, my sheep hear my voice. This is not just about a book promotion. I'm not just here to promote a book or to ask you to buy the book. This is a tool that will help you and guide you step by step, precept upon precept. It will help to get you activated. It will help to get you thinking. It will help to get you connected on a deeper level with the Lord. I, um, I really believe, I really, really believe that many of you, once you start reading this book, are going to get activated or even refined in hearing the voice of God. Because, beloved, like I've said multiple times today, it is your birthright to hear the voice of God. God wants to speak to you more than you want to hear Him. It's not a spooky process. It's not a difficult process. You just need help uh, becoming more attuned. You need some help or some coaching being guided through the process. I wished I would have had something like this in my life many years ago and started hearing the voice of God at an early age. Beloved, this is going to bless you. It's available now on Amazon. The link is in the bottom. I thank you so much for watching today. As I'm wrapping here today, I just want to reiterate what I've been saying. I say I repeat myself when something is important. Know that it is your birthright to hear the voice of God. And God is not going to withhold any good thing from you. You go to him and you ask him, regardless of if you you know buy this book or not, this book is a tool for you. I don't want you to think that this is the only thing that's going to help you to hear the voice of God. No, 
God is sovereign. It's your birthright. And the Bible is, is, uh, is your tool as well. The book is based on the Bible, but the Bible is your tool. So whether you buy this book or not, it is your birthright, beloved, to hear the voice of God. So ask him, believe him, have faith that you're going to do it and just step into it. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. I love you. I really do love you. I pray for you all the time. I love you, but God loves you more. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.